Good morning and welcome to my hobby bench yet again for another quick look video. Now as you can see on the table I have an ASP engine here. Now this engine is one that uh, was one of the very first probably in the first four to five glow engines that I ever owned and the first one I bought was probably back in 1989 maybe 1990 but I think it was 1989 and I put it in a super a Great Plains Super Decathlon a Super Decathlon 40. Now this engine dates back to at least 1988 not maybe not this particular one but this version dates back to 1988 or so and what it is is the ASP 46 ABC. Now the last time one of these engines was featured on my channel was way way back in 2016 and they were simply run videos so I've never actually shown one of these like this. Now this is not a complete, complete new in-box engine. There's some paperwork that's not here, but it's pretty darn close. Now, this, it, this box, one of the things that's nice about this box is it's, it's in very good condition. You can see here there's a price listed on the bottom, $92.99. have no idea who wrote that. From what I recall back in the late 80s, early 90s, these things were running about $78 or so, and I didn't pay much more than that for this particular one. So I'm gonna open this lid up, but the first thing I wanna show you inside the lid is something else that I think is rather interesting. And I have worked in some grocery stores before and stuff like that, and to me, that looks like a date code stamped on this box. Now it says 941108. Now, in the past, I've seen date codes like that, meaning 1994, 11th month, 8th day. So, in theory, this box might date back to November 8th of 1994, and maybe that's how, how old this engine is. But we can't really tell for sure. So, this engine came with just the instruction manual. There should have been like one or two other little uh, manufacturer's warranty card, or a safety sheet, something like that. So that's all the paperwork that came with this engine. And here's the engine. And this is exactly how they came from the factory. They'd be packaged exactly like this. So this is completely stock. And I'm just gonna take these three items out here real quick and move the box aside. So what we've got here is we've got the engine, we've got the exhaust, and we've got the carburetor. Now, I'm gonna open the carburetor up first. Now this was stapled. Uh, originally so when I got it this had never been opened before but just in the last few days I uh, actually opened this up and took this carb out because those of you that are familiar with my channel and possibly watched the last video I put out which was the uh, Weber Speed 61 run after ring replacement I wasn't super thrilled with that carb or the needles that are in that particular engine so I was looking for another carb to substitute and put on that um, put on that engine to just try different carbs and see if we can get it to run a little bit better. And believe it or not, this throat diameter is like a 12.82 millimeters or basically a half inch, maybe just on right on a half inch. And it fits perfectly on that, uh, that Weber Speed 61 engine. This is a 46, that's a 61. So it's interesting. Now a buddy of mine, Harvey, also has a few other carbs. He's actually got the Weber Dynamix carb that uh, was on the, and I'm digressing here, was on the 91 speed that I gave to him a few years ago. He was gonna send that carb and a couple other carbs uh, with me too that f have the same throat diameter. So anyway, that's why this is open. But this is, um, these carbs are not bad. It's a twin needle carb and it's got this, you know, dust cover type of thing. So in a way this kind of looks like a Super Tiger carb, I think, just because of the way it's got these little dust covers, because some of those Super Tiger carbs had that feature. But uh, this looks to me, based on the review article, the only review article I found on this engine, this looks to me like a slightly um, newer carb style than the one that was shown in that review article, <clears throat> which also kind of backs up the fact that maybe this is a 1994 engine. Here's our exhaust. Really nothing too special here with the exhaust. It's a single piece, <clears throat> excuse me. It's a single piece exhaust. Don't know if there's a baffle in there or not. You can't take it apart and see. 
but it came with the tools, the two screws and the hex, hex keys to attach that. Now, here's the engine. Now, ASP was never known for having super crisp, high quality looking castings by any means. Uh, but it's not bad. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got something in my throat. It's not bad at all. It's, this one is a rather nice looking engine, and this is a true ABC engine. Unlike a lot of the engines OS made, or probably most of the ones where they say ABC and they're really not, they're ABN. This is a true ABC engine. Now, this thing, you can tell, here's another reason you can tell it's brand new, is that this has never had a prop tightened onto it because I can't even really turn it over. Uh, it's been sitting with the manufacturer's oil in it for so long that I can't turn it over at all. It's, and even if I could, it would be so tight that I wouldn't really want to try and pull it past top dead center because you really don't want to do that with a really true ABC engine anyway. You don't want to keep flipping it over and turning it over by hand through top dead center because that's just not good for the fitment. It really needs to have that done when it's running. But anyway, this is going to be a very short video. I'm not going to open it up and look inside. I know this thing is a pristine engine. And it's just, it's a nice engine. And it's going to be fun to run. This is one of the more powerful engines of the time in this displacement. I think Clarence Lee's review article said the only other engine that matched the, top, the peak RPM that this one matched at least with a 10.6 prop was a YS45 at that time. So that's really saying something. And I know I had several of these. In fact, the ASP46, the very first one I had, was the only engine that I ever destroyed. And I mean completely destroyed. And that was back in, I think, 1990, 91 when I was flying it. And just still learning how to tune engines. And I was like, this thing is super powerful. This is a cool engine. So I tweaked it out way too lean up in the air flying, doing a low pass, and all of a sudden it just went zip, and the rear bearings lost. Lost the rear bearing and it just completely trashed the engine because the race came off and the balls went bouncing all around in the engine. So that was the only engine I've ever completely destroyed and it was probably completely my fault because I think I just simply leaned it out too much. Um, but anyway, this will be on the stand here very soon as it stands right now, it is April 3rd or 4th, I can't recall exactly, one of the two, and we have about, I don't know, six to eight inches of snow on the ground. We just had a, a, another massive snowstorm uh, yesterday and overnight, so there's a lot of snow out there. It's very heavy, wet snow. The temperature is warm, it's above freezing, so it's not going to last long, and the weekend is supposed to be in the 50s. Whether I can get out and run an engine is very questionable because the road to the field will probably be a mud bog and everything will be a mud bog. So unfortunately, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to actually get out to the field and run this engine or any engine this weekend, but I sure am gonna try and hope for that. So anyway, that is a quickie look at the uh, ASP 46 engine.